So hello everyone. Welcome to today's live Q&A. We are going to be talking all about cocktailing. Uh, we got some really great questions from you guys over the weekend that myself, Tracy, and Corinne are all going to answer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself and then I'll let these lovely ladies introduce themselves as well. So my name is Sarah Robbins. I'm the Director of Education here at Glymed Plus and I'm also a licensed master esthetician in the state of Utah. My name is Tracy Kimball. I am a national educator for Glymed Plus, and I absolutely love all this stuff we're doing for you guys. So mm -hmm. prepare to get thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Corinne. I am Glymed Social Aesthetic Educator, um, and I'm glad that these ladies invited me to come on with them today. So it'll be a lot of fun. Well, thank you for joining us, Corinne. We thought we'd just liven it up by adding another person. Yep, it'll be fun. So, yeah. oh, and I am a licensed master esthetician in the state of Utah as well. <laughs> yep. That's the great thing about Glymed Plus is that all of your account managers are, are master estheticians as well as your, your education team is um, also a master esthetician. That's one of our requirements. So anytime you're talking to any of us or anyone also at the office, you know that you're speaking to a master esthetician. So hopefully you're getting your questions answered, but here's a chance for you to ask specific questions. And this is specifically on cocktailing. Mm -hmm. So should we jump right in? Are you ready? Yes, before actually before Tracy, you, you start reading the questions. I just want to do a quick little um, blurb that we are going to be giving some recommendations on cocktailing, but when we talk about cocktailing chemical pills specifically, I just want to make sure that everyone gets training on cocktailing chemical pills um, for that reason. It's because you really need to understand what you're doing when applying acids to the skin and then combining different acids together. So we are going to be erring on the side of caution because we are going to be giving a lot of different recommendations in this webinar. But please, please know that if you are wanting to cocktail chemical pills that you should get training and not just take what we're saying today and applying it into your services. So with I that said, that. let's move forward. And I also like the idea of making sure that you, um, that you try it either on yourself or someone that is a close friend maybe before you really jump out into your clientele because you don't want to have problems. Yeah. Okay, so the first one, what products can we not cocktail together? Now we got this question asked in multiple different forms, um, but I'm going to start by saying you really want to be careful and cautious when you're cocktailing your chemical peels, your AHAs or your BHA based products. Um, you don't want to add those to anything like a CBD or any of your active serums. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense really to do that because oftentimes those AHAs and BHAs will actually break down the components in those products and um, it really isn't doing you as much good. We actually prefer to apply any of your serums, your active, non-active, and even your CBD um, after your treatment where it's left on the skin and you're able to actually absorb that for a longer length of time and you'll see um, the benefits from it. Um, can you cocktail it with a chemical peel? Yes, we aren't chemists. We really don't know exactly what it's doing, but in our minds, we're feeling like that would make sense for you not to do it that way. Anything you want to add, girls? The Youth Firm. Since the Youth Firm is an enzyme, a 30% protease enzyme, that is one that you just want to use on its own as well. You don't want to risk anything breaking down that enzyme. And so Youth Firm is another one that just use on its own. Yeah, and, and I think it's important to truly think about what you're trying to achieve when choosing products to pair together. It needs to make sense. So you wouldn't necessarily want to take like a cleanser and add in a serum because that cleanser is going to probably break down that serum before it actually does anything for the skin. So think about what you're trying to pair together and make sure it makes sense. So not to say that you can't do that or that's not going to hurt the skin, but it's not going to be the most effective cocktail. So really think through what you're trying to combine together. 
And that kind of goes along with the next question. Can you also go over which products, ingredients, not to cocktail together? And I think it, we've kind of covered that a little bit, um, but any other specifics that you want to add? Um, no, I mean, I just think when you're cocktailing, again, it just needs to make sense. And you, I, so a good rule of thumb, especially if you're brand new to cocktailing, something I always recommend to my accounts when they start to actually dip into the world of cocktailing is uh, to just go ahead and do like-minded pairs. And but what I mean by that is like, if you're going to try cocktailing, try cocktailing a cleanser with another cleanser or a mask with another mask. Um, and that's just a really great way to start introducing cocktailing and getting more comfortable with cocktailing. So don't just start, you know, taking moisturizers and mixing them in with a uh, cleanser. Try and do like-minded pairings. And then once you get comfortable, then branch out and try new fun things too. I yeah. like that. Okay, how often should you be masking with a four layer peel if you're using other masks too. So like Sarah was saying, um, you wanna pair those together, but another good rule of thumb, if you are doing chemical peels, you really should be waiting on an average of about three weeks in between your peels. Um, now that, that's an average, so you might have someone that doesn't heal very quickly, I don't necessarily heal very quickly. And so I'll wait up to four weeks sometimes in between a chemical peel. Um, so that is one of the, the criteria. So if you're, if, you're, if you're going with peels, make sure that you're waiting at least three weeks in between. Yeah. And then if you're doing um, a chemical peel that day, I typically, depending on the type of chemical peel that you do, I don't like to follow with a mask. I usually like to wait seven days before I start introducing masks into their regimen. So again, it just kind of depends on the pill that you're doing and kind of what you're trying to achieve when doing this combination. Great. After that as well, if, if you are asking how often you can do a mask, um, if you do wait that seven days after a chemical peel, you can do a mask as often as you would like. So there's right. a line with how um, far in between a mask you have to wait. Right. Yeah, and that's a good point, Corinne, because you could use a different type of mask. If you were going to do it every day, um, it just, you wouldn't want to do the same mask every day. Uh, you could definitely alternate. So you could do like an exfoliating mask one day, and then the next day do more of like a tightening and firming mask. So you could do a mask every day. Just right. be wise with what you're choosing to use. Right. You definitely don't want to use one that's constantly drying out your skin. That just doesn't make sense but I like, the, I like being able to use a mask that's appropriate whenever you need it, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, what can you not cocktail with the oxygen booster? Really, there's nothing that you can't cocktail that with because that the oxygen booster was made to be added into any product, whether it was a cleanser, a mask, a serum, and even a moisturizer. The only thing I probably wouldn't cocktail it with is maybe an SPF. But I mean, you technically could. I just would. I would rather have it in my moisturizer or with a serum. So right. And isn't it fantastic? You can take any product and make it an oxygen product. <laughs> so that's the that's the beauty of that oxygen booster. I love it. The genius, Christine. Which that is Christine. She's a genius for sure. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay, the best four layer cocktail peel. Um, and really, there are so many combinations that you can come up with for cocktailing, not just peels, but um, masks, cleansers, everything. So when you're looking at trying to decide what am I going to do for my client, realize you need to look at what your client is, first of all, what their um, main complaint is, and then go after that. Um, you know, you might see on their skin, oh my goodness, you need some help with that hyperpigmentation. <laughs> but when you go in, they look and they think, this wrinkle I've got going, I got to get rid of it. So really listen to your clients, do what they want done first, and then go in and cocktail accordingly. Um, there are 
different um, cocktail recommendations out on our website. We've got um, protocols that are that can cover just about anything. So take the time, look at some of the protocols that we have out have out on our website. If none fit your needs, um, start thinking, what does my client really need? What are they wanting done? And then start layering your peels accordingly. Anything you want to add, guys? No, you example of one for someone that is concerned with like aging and pigmentation. Um, so what one thing that you can do is pre-treat them with the oxygen regenerative peel. So use that as a pre-treat. Um, do one layer of either the five berry or the vitamin A peel. Once that has completely neutralized, you can put a lactic 30 on for five to 10 minutes, remove that, and then finish them off with the skin peeling lotion. So there's a lot of different options that you can do with cocktailing or doing a four layer peel or facial. It just depends on what the client's needs are and just base it off of that. A hundred percent. I think you guys hit it right on the head. You can't say this is the most amazing four layer treatment uh, because you, it depend, every client has a different need. And so depending on what you put together will depend, depend on your client's skin. And addressing, like they said, the main concern or concerns is how you would put together your cocktail. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, here's a good one. Cocktailing serious action products. Um, how do I use them for someone with sensitive or rosacea skin? And I'm going to just jump in real quick and just say those serious action products are could be a little bit harsh for someone with sensitive or rosacea skin. Um, however, there are some combinations. I'm going to let you guys jump in too. Yeah, so if someone, I, this is a really great question because it, and just taking the question and trying to figure out how we could digest it, it's, it's a great question because if someone has very sensitive skin and they're compromised and maybe they have, you know, a subtype one through three of rosacea, my first go-to wouldn't be the serious action line. I would prefer to work on like repairing and building their barrier first. And then once their skin is in a healthier state, then we can move over to serious action. Uh, but if we, if the only option is serious action, there are a few products in there that you can kind of adjust to fit someone with a more sensitive or rosacea skin type. So um, like the Salix Purifying Cleanser is really great because it has salicylic acid and it's in an aloe vera based. So it's not actually not even water based, it's aloe vera based. So that one would be really good. And then um, I know we have a few other treatment cocktails um, that we like to do. The Sulfur Mask is fantastic. It's really, really good for helping to kill that bacteria caused by the Demodex mite and also reduce inflammation. Um, and then Corinne, do you want to give a shout out for any of them? Yeah, if, um, so since glycolic acid is amazing for rosacea clients, the skin gel actually has salicylic, or I'm sorry, it actually has glycolic, lactic, and a little bit of salicylic acid in it. It may be a little too harsh for some sensitive clients, so you can actually cocktail it with the ultra hydro gel to bring down some of the potency and that heat on the skin. So that's another great way for them to get those glycolics um, without overstimulating the skin. Right. And I really do love the idea also. When we're going in for someone with sensitive or rosacea skin, we want to make sure, like Sarah was saying, build up that barrier so that they can receive um, different treatments that will actually help go in and build, um, take care of some of their other issues. Mm -hmm. So things like your cell protection serum, um, rosacea relief, CBD, and even fulvic. Those are all fantastic. You're going to help uh, moisturize, new give the nutrients that your skin needs, and really build up that barrier. Um, getting it healthy is what you really want to concentrate on with someone with sensitive or rosacea skin. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, sir. Oh, no. Um, I was just going to say that's such, such a fantastic point, Tracy, because I think when we have clients coming in with skin conditions, we are just like so excited to try and help correct or treat that we forget that number one, the skin has to be healthy. And so it's so important that we get the skin in a better state or in a healthier state before we even think about doing more advanced treatments because we're going to be doing more harm if we don't get that barrier back in place. 
That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry, Corinne. No, no, you're good. Um, we, we get a lot of direct messages on our Instagram account with um, pictures of people's clients or pictures that people send to us with their skin who are having breakouts. And that's one of the biggest things that I see is overly stripped skin. Um, people just think the, the more aggressive products they keep putting on their skin, the better their skin's going to look but we do have to have healthy skin in order to help clear up that acne or that skin concern. Otherwise you're just fighting a double-edged sword and you're not going to get the results that you want. So skin health is key. 100%. I'm going to ask each of us are going to go through and just give you one of our favorite cocktails mm -hmm. um, for masks. So I'll start with Corinne. So I personally love to do the ultra hydrating enzyme mask. I'll do about a tablespoon of that. Um, I'll put in a couple of drops of the beauty oil to really amplify that, that hydration and moisture content. And then I'll even put in um, either the oxygen booster or the oxygen deep pore cleanser to really get rid of that follicular debris. And I just feel like it just leaves my skin extremely glowy. And if I am feeling a little rough or dry at the moment, even putting in some of the intense, um, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. Intense peptide? Yes. <laughs> I'll even mix in some of that to get some of those enzymes and I'll put it on in the bath to get some of that steam going as well to activate those enzymes. Mm, I love that idea. Yeah, that yeah. sounds yummy. <laughs> you got to try it. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Um, my favorite mask cocktail is actually to take equal parts of the chocolate mask mixed in with the anti-aging exfoliant mask. And you kind of get this like chocolate black licorice. So it's really, mm. really a fun one to do in, during the fall months, yes. uh, like around Halloween and Thanksgiving. Uh, but I just love what it does. It really helps with brightening the overall skin tone. It, it removes any texture. Um, so you get some exfoliation, but you also get some luminosity and some brightening effects from that combo. So wow. when you do that, do you mix them in a bowl together or are you applying them separately? So I do both. So that's the great thing with cocktailing is you could either do a mixing cocktail or you could do a layered cocktail. So it, it really just depends on how I feel and like how much exfoliation or if I want more like brightening and moisture increasing properties. Uh, but you could mix them equal parts together and apply it. And then um, you could also layer it. So applying one and then going on top with the other. The one thing that I do consistently though is I let it sit for uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll work the jojoba beads from the anti-aging mask in to remove whatever those AHAs actually help to break down so what I'm doing tonight I'm gonna try that one tonight I think <laughs> it's a good one okay here's my favorite one we all know that I'm the grandma in the group right yeah. whatever <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I am a grandma, so I'm living at large. Um, so my favorite one is the wrinkle prescription mask with the treatment cream. So oh, yeah. I mix those together and then put it on my skin and I actually cover my pillow and I leave it on overnight. And I'm, I, I normally do this when I start seeing my deeper lines coming back. And I'm like, I, what is going on? This can't be happening. But I'll leave it on. In the morning when I wake up, my skin looks so plump, I can't even see a wrinkle anymore. Oh, so I bet. really, really a great one. Yeah. I was going to say, I bet you're so tight the next day. I am. I did it last night. Can you tell? <laughs> so here's a question. If you put the, um, the, the wrinkle drone, um, I can't remember the technical name, but if you put that on first or spot treat with that first, and then the anti-wrinkle mask on with the treatment cream, will that give you even more of that? Oh, with covering up the Ooh, I love that idea. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this would be that would be a great one to cocktail with some, a couple other ingredients too. I just am usually too tired at, by the time I'm going to bed, so I'm just <laughs> two products. Let's go. Keep it simple. <laughs> so I do love it though. It is a great one, and anyone that tries it, shout out to us on um, social. I want to see what you think. Yeah. Okay. Someone just asked you to repeat that cocktail. Oh, okay. Wrinkle prescription mask with the treatment cream. Mm -hmm. And I'll usually, I mean, I'm not really, I'm kind of one of those mad scientists that I'm like a little of this, a little of that. 
Um, but I'll usually do almost equal portions, maybe a little bit more of the prescription mask. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I do a, a healthy amount of the treatment cream. I love the treatment cream. Yeah. Especially it's, one the it's a great one for night. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So next one, what acids are you allowed to layer and how? Great question. So that's kind of free range. Just make, well, make sure you're comfortable with your chemical peels. Um, if you're not comfortable with a specific chemical peel, I wouldn't recommend going in and layering it or cocktailing it with another chemical peel. So make sure you are completely comfortable with your chemical peels and the knowledge of them before you start mixing and matching them. But if you have a client that's coming in that has a concern with hyperpigmentation is their main concern, but then they're also extremely dry, um, you can do a layer or two of a tea, you know, a five berry vitamin A peel and then follow it up once that's neutralized with a lactic 30. Um, so there's many different ways that you can combine and cocktail them depending on what your client's concerns are. And I know that Tracy and Sarah both have amazing options and um, have seen great results combining and layering the peels. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right though, Corinne. You need to be comfortable and you again, it goes back to you just need to understand why you're mixing two products mm -hmm. together and um, don't just start doing that and throwing it out on your clients. That's definitely not the time to be testing. <laughs> uh, so like Tracy was saying, do it on yourself or try it on a family member before you just start experimenting on clients. Um, and honestly, when we're talking about chemi uh, cocktailing chemical pills, it's an entirely another subject. And I, again, I'm going to stress that you should get training on that because it's so important to understand why you're mixing and matching. And so we don't like to just, um, throw out like here's how you do it like you definitely want to get some training before attempting to do stuff like that i agree i agree because chemical peels you can you run the risk of um leaving hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. uh, behind in in the wake of the whole uh experiment and you don't want to do that so making sure that you get great um training on it i know that we um do have several of our webinars that are dealing, we've got one on cocktail peeling. Am I correct, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have a, one on cocktail peeling that can kind of give you some of those basics as well. So take some time, um, get to understand your cocktail peels or your peels before you start cocktailing them. We did. Just, oh, oh, no, you go ahead, Kren. I was just gonna say, and you do wanna also make sure you're adjusting the amount of layers or the time that a peel will sit on the skin when you are layering um, different chemical peels. So just be aware that, you know, if you're going to be living, leaving a lactic 30 on the skin for 10 minutes normally, but you want to add a layered chemical peel on it, cut that lactic 30 down to maybe around five minutes before you then follow up with the layered peel. So just be aware that you need to cut them both down on the amount of time or the amount of layers. Yep, absolutely. You need, you need to adjust. Um, just to go along with this question, we got a question in the chat that said, could you do the lactic first and then the five berry? Mm -hmm. And it's a great question because this, again, it is more of a personal preference. Um, we typically like to do your layered first and then a time. So you would, we would like to do five berry first because it neutralizes at a certain point. And then when you do a timed pill, like the lactic on top of it, it's more working on the surface and not going further into the skin. So it's more about being able to control the wounding that we're doing on this skin. So we prefer to do layered and then timed. Great. And then also, um, does chemical, sorry, does cocktailing the chemical exfoliant or peel Sorry, choking. Telling <laughs> 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 the chemical exfoliant or peel with mask lessen the intensity? And the answer is yes, it does. Um, anytime that you are putting a chemical peel, it will either boost the mask and the properties that are in the mask or lessen the peel. So if you're trying to... Um, if you want more of the effects from the mask, go ahead and, and um, put more of the chemical in. If you want less, you would use less. So about 50-50 would help to actually just drive those products in deeper. 
Anything else? Yeah. Where too that if you are uh, mixing in a peel with say the ultra hydrating enzyme mask, because of that green appearance on the skin, it will be a little bit harder to watch for that urethema in the skin. Mm. Um, so just really be a little bit more cautious with the time um, with that. And then also make sure you know your client's skin. Other masks like the wrinkle prescription mask, that one you can see the skin a little bit better. So it's easier to watch for that urethema, but just really talk to your client as well and see how their skin is feeling during that time. Um, Absolutely. Okay. I love this one. Serums under mask, question mark. Yes, exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> really just depends on what mask and what serum you're using. Because you wouldn't want to use, um, say, the CBD booster or with the anti-aging uh, mask. Because of the blend of the AHAs in the anti-aging mask, it would just actually, what we feel like, would start to break down some of those CBD properties. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you're using um, serums and masks that make sense. Mm -hmm. yep. um, we, again, we love to use serums. But Sarah and I always are teaching in our classes, make sure that you are um, leaving a serum, using a serum when you can actually leave it on the skin. You're going to get the best benefits from it then. So we like to do our masks and then go back in with serums. Yep, 100%. Okay, can we cocktail CBD booster with active masks? I guess we kind of just answered that. Um, CBD would be okay to, oh, they're asking, can you do it in your hand and not in a dish? So anytime you use CBD with a non-active acid or serum, yes, that would be great to do it in your hand. But if you're doing it with an active acid, you would want to use it in a dish. And that way you're not um, contaminating it with anything that might already be on your gloves um, and your, um, you're just adding those products directly into the skin without adding anything else. Anything else? Um, I personally, when I'm doing my morning or nighttime routine, I always just cocktail in my own hand. Um, just mix them in and it's just easier for me and then I don't have to worry about getting a dish dirty. Um, I'll even do that in the treatment room. If it's an easy product to cocktail together, I'll just do it in my hand. But if it is more of a mask that I'm cocktailing things in with the mask, then I'll do it in a dish so I can mix them up better. Yeah. Okay. We're going to give you just a few of our favorite um, quick ones. Cocktails that we love. We love to, Sarah already mentioned this, but we like to cocktail cleansers with cleansers or cleansers uh, um, can be cocktailed with masks but generally like products together um, is a great way to start. And then I'm gonna give you our CEO's favorite that she shared with us a while ago. She likes it whenever she's going out to an event, um, she likes to put in a couple drops of the TCA uh, chemical um, peel, and then she'll maybe even just a quarter of a teaspoon, and then she'll put it in with the treatment cream apply it to her skin and leave it on and then apply her other products. So that just helps to give her a real tight um, lift to the skin. She looks glowy and dewy all night. So that's a kind of a, a secret one. Um, I know she'd share it with you too, or I wouldn't uh, share it. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. It's a good one. If you've never, if you've never tried it, it's a good one to do. Um, just don't test it out a day before an, an event. Do it beforehand so you know how it works with your skin. But, um, <laughs> it's a good one for sure. Mm -hmm. it's a good one. Okay, any others that you guys can think of? I'll have like a million and one cocktails depending, <laughs> on, depending on what I'm trying to do. I actually will share my lip cocktail because I get asked about my lips all the time. And yes, they are mine. These are my lips. Um, no filler. No, no filler. filler. A big shout out to the Derma Sound and the Lip Science. Those two are life changing for me as far as the lips go. Um, but to prep my lips, I actually like to take the cell protection balm. I lather it all over my lips and I let it sit for anywhere from like five to 10 minutes. And then I'll take the micro scrub and just go in and remove any of the dead skin. 
And then I go right on top of that with the lip science and the ultra hydrating lip balm. And I do it every single night to help increase the volume in my lips and to also keep my lip structure nice and firm. So I would say I get asked on my lips all the time. So that's the one I'll share with you guys. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I um, have, my under eyes are an area of concern that I'm always a little self-conscious of. Um, and so mixing the wrinkle remedy with the CBD eye cream, doing that every single night really helps plump them up and helps with the appearance of those fine lines and wrinkles and hollowness under the eyes. So that's Ooh. my favorites. Yeah, I love that. That's a good that's one. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm How about you, Tracy? Do you have a little favorite? Oh, I think I, I go with um, Christine. I love the TCA with the treatment cream. Yeah. No. I, I think it's awesome. I honestly use it more than I probably should, but that's okay. <laughs> es estheticians are naughty sometimes. <laughs> we are the exception to our own roles. Okay? More, more is more for us. Okay? <laughs> but Tracy, I was going to say your most famous cocktail is your vitamin C with your DNA face and neck. That's oh, right. yeah. I had forgotten about that one. Oh, so when I started, I, I had a few complaints. I started um, last July with Glymed. And I, I came to Sarah, I said, Sarah, what can we do about my gobbler? This, this loose skin hanging under my neck. And when I, she um, gave me this little cocktail, it was the DNA face reset, mm -hmm. DNA. The DNA cream, and the vitamin C serum. Cocktail those together, and I started using it on not just my, not just my neck, my whole face, love what it's done. It's mm -hmm. actually lifted me tremendously. I think it's fantastic. So love that vitamin C serum. It is vitamin C and then the DNA with it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then last, I want to just put in a plug also for the skin peeling lotion. Um, it is an amazing product. We've talked about that a little bit last week or maybe the week before, um, but that skin peeling lotion would be a fantastic one to use with a little bit of the Lactic 30. So you would get some of that peeling happening, but then you're also going to get the effects of hydration from the Lactic 30. So that is a great combination as well. It's like a little baby Jesner. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Friend, that's perfect. It's a baby Jesner. Baby Jesner. And another thing that you can do with that skin peeling lotion is put it on your client after a chemical peel, send them home with a little tester size of the skin peeling lotion and instruct them to put it on the next two nights. And um, they'll see a peeling probably within a day or two. It depends on your client's skin. And that just really amplifies that chemical peel boosts that up and gives them more of that exfoliation. So if you have a client who doesn't, who isn't going to think that their lactic peel is as effective because they're not peeling, that's a good way to kind of trick them as well into thinking that that chemical peel that you gave them is making them peel when it's really that skin peeling lotion that's causing the peeling effect. Right. I love skin peeling lotion after any peel mm -hmm. just because it speeds up that um, healing process so much. I've had some pretty aggressive peels that literally I am completely done within 10 days. Hmm. So it, it's amazing. It really is one of those game changers. Now have you, when you've done it over an aggressive chemical peel, have you experienced any sensitivities with it because of the sal or have you been? No. Experience with it? Well, I have very tough skin. Um, Sarah can attest to that. Mm -hmm. I have very, very tough skin. So. Anytime I'm using a product, I mean, she'll put something on and I'll be like, okay, are you ready? And she's like, honey, you still got, you still got two and a half more minutes. It's only been 30 seconds. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, for me, no, but yes, I think you could see some sensitivity, but again, the peeling and the healing that comes from it is worth that little bit of discomfort. Yeah. Um, the skin peeling lotion it's not one that you're going to put down and have an activity kind of like you would with like glycolic. Um, it's not going to be like a spicy or tingly sensation, which I think is wonderful, especially after a chemical peel. Um, but depending on the chemical peel that you did, sometimes we're, our clients are already numb, depending on which one you've done on them. So, <laughs> but it's not one you have to worry about like an activity when applying it to the skin. 
So what guidelines do you feel like are safe to give to people? Like, are there peels that you would say not to layer it on top of, or what safety guidelines do you have with the skin peeling lotion? Um, I, you can do it with any chemical pill. Honestly, it's, it's such a small amount of resorcinol and really it's just going to help to speed up that desquamation or peeling that's happening that you could even do it after a Jesner. Um, uh, but of course, like all of the standard contraindications apply, right? So if someone can't receive a Jesner uh, because of the resorcinol in there, you couldn't use peeling lotion on them ever because it does have resorcinol. But as far as using it after chemical pills, you can do it with all chemical pills. Okay, should we jump into some of the chat room questions? Yes, we got some yes. awesome questions. I've been looking through a few of them and these are really, really good questions, you guys. Do you guys wanna um, read those? Cause I'd have to put on my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Let me scroll to the top. There's one that I'm gonna go ahead and answer now just cause I think it's such a great question. And it says, are there any additional legal or liability concerns mm -hmm. regarding cocktailing products such as if a client had a reaction with a boosted product? And this is an amazing question. Um, and the answer is there's no additional legal or liability concerns with cocktailing as long as you're, you are using products that are in your scope of practice and are products that you can use in your licensure under your state law. And what I mean by that is if you can only do a lactic 30, you shouldn't be trying to cocktail a lactic 50. So making sure you're staying within your state law and your state guidelines. Um, but if you think about it, every product is technically a cocktailed product. It's one product that's using a d multiple ingredients combined into one product. So there's no additional liabilities as long as you're using um, products that are within your scope of practice and you're working within your state law. So that is a really great question and I'm so glad that you asked that. And you can also check if you work with like a medical spa or work at a spa that has um, additional insurance, you can always ask your insurance as well to see if there's any guidelines with that. I worked at a medical spa that would not, even in, here in the state of Utah, would not let us use a lactic above 30%. And so just making sure even with your insurance yes. that you carry as well. Yep, that's a great point. Okay, so first question, what is a good ratio of lactic 30 or lactic 50 to masks? And I'm going to say it depends on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to boost the mask or are you trying to boost the um, chemical peel effects? Um, but I would say um, a good place to start if you don't, if, if you're not sure, if you're doing this on yourself, maybe just do 50-50, Sarah? Karina? Yeah. 50-50 is always a good range. And then if you want, and like Tracy said, depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to make it less aggressive, you would do more of the mask and less of the peel. If you wanted to just only slightly buffer the peel, you could do more of the peel and only add a tiny bit of the mask. So it, again, it's just depending on what you're trying to do. Is it per client? Yeah. Okay, um, let's see, we already went over that one. Okay. Can we cocktail chocolate and lactic peel? And what are the percentages? So, so yes. I'll, I'll let you answer, Sarah. No, we do not. We do not like to cocktail the chocolate peel with other chemical peels. The chemical peel, the chocolate chemical peel is very, very spicy. It's a, it's one of our stronger chemical peels, despite the name being chocolate. Um, that one, we, like to cocktail it with moisturizers and our favorite one is the intense peptide um, and that peel is just one that I always err on the side of caution I don't think you need to be afraid of it as long as you're using it properly it's just more of a high maintenance peel but if you're talking about the chocolate mask then you can cocktail the chocolate mask with the lactic peel so if someone is having their first chocolate peel, what do you usually recommend um, the buffering ranges? How much oh, oh. Is peptide? Great question, 50-50. Okay. So, yep. If they're very sensitive, I would do 25% peel, 75% moisturizer. Okay. So any cocktail that is great for acne spot treatment or inflamed acne? So I have one that I personally love. Um, it's actually on our feed and um, you can go and check it out, but it's the Serious Action Mask. 
with some astringent number two, some medication number five, and some, then some of the um, oxygen deep pore cleanser. So if someone is inflamed, you're not gonna wanna rub it into the area since the serious action mask does have a little bit of grit to it. But if they're non-inflamed, then you can um, rub it in to give them some of that exfoliation as well. Um, but that's my personal favorite, and I'm sure you guys have some that you like as well. I think that skin medication um, is really fantastic for um, spot treating. Um, specifically, I mean, I wouldn't start with the 10. I would definitely start with mm -hmm. the um, 5 and then work up to the 10. But that spot treatment, or uh, anytime you're going to do spot treatment um, for acne, but that um, skin medication is fantastic. If it's too much, you can um, lessen it um, by cutting it with, what would you say, ultra hydro gel? Ultra hydro. Or a comfort cream. I mean, it would be a good one too. So many combinations for cocktailing, right? You could do the oxygen treatment cream. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nope, I love it. I think medication and the combo that you both said is awesome. Okay. So I have very sensitive skin reacts to the active ingredients. Is there any peel I can do for my skin or break down with cocktailing? Um, I think the intense antioxidant. Yeah, intense antioxidant is a great one. And you could even mix that one in with the comfort cream or the cell protection serum. And that way you just get extra benefits of those barrier repair ingredients in there. Right. Again, if you're using a, a mask or a peel of any sort, remember they are designed to, um, to eliminate the dead skin and to help with oil and all those things. So really think through why you're wanting to do a peel before your skin is actually healthy. So um, peels aren't necessarily going to benefit you. Some peels let me rephrase that. Some peels are not going to benefit you if your uh, barrier is compromised. Mm -hmm. So making sure that your barrier is intact before you go in with any aggressive peels, of course. But I think um, cocktailing, that intensive um, peel is, is really quite mild mm -hmm. um, and can be used on just about anybody. So that would be definitely where I would start for any kind of appeal. Or you can even start with things like um, your astringents. If you're you know, worried about oil, start low, 2%. Mm -hmm. and any ideas on those? Oh, I think that's good. Yeah, okay. concentrate on the health first, yeah. Okay, what are the most effective types of products to cocktail? Examples, cleansers, serums, moisturizers, thank you. Great question. I would say serums are probably going to be the most effective just because, um, and it, again, it depends on what you're trying to care for, right? If your client's worried about texture, masks are going to be awesome for them. Um, but if you're looking at creating changes within the skin, your serum cocktails are going to be the most beneficial because they're smaller molecular weights. They're able to go further into the skin, um, but they're all effective depending on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what have you found to be best result driven cocktail for wrinkles in a home care routine? I think the cocktail that you were talking about, Tracy, is an amazing answer for that one. I think both the, um, the wrinkle prescription mask with the treatment cream at night is fantastic, spot on. And then the DNA with the vitamin C is more of a daytime routine. So you can use um, that D DNA and vitamin C um, morning and night, but if you're gonna be using the wrinkle prescription, I'd, I'd use it um, during the day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, what's the first one with the oil? I'm, I think that you're meaning the, the cocktail, um, the mask cocktail. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say, I know some of these got answered in the chat, um, but Corinne, it's just your cocktail with the oil in your mask. So if you just want to restate that one. So the ultra hydrating enzyme mask, a couple of drops of beauty oil, the oxygen deep pore cleanser or the oxygen booster. And then if you wanted to, you could add in some of that intense antioxidant for more of those enzymes. 
excellent. Love it. Okay. Um, so you don't have to neutralize the lactic 30. You do. You do have to neutralize that with a cold, wet towel. Okay. What would you, oh, hold on. Let me move this down. What cocktail would you do on a client that has stretch marks that she wants gone? Is that possible? I personally have seen great results. I did a gal's stomach that had actually, she had a four or five year old little girl. I actually went in, microneedled it, and then went back in with active products directly over it and saw amazing results. I think we used um, the stem cell protection serum and fulvic. I'm not positive, but those were two of the ones that I do remember. And then she followed it up at home with um, like the wrinkle remedy, some of these other more um, targeted products. Yeah, targeted products at home as well. Any yeah. that you would recommend? 100% um, love microneedling. I think that microneedling and the Dermasound are both two really great tools for helping with stretch marks. Um, my favorite to do is to do a Dermasound treatment. So do cavitation for 10 minutes. And then I actually like to sono in the anti-cellulite massage cream and a little bit of the vitamin E cream. And, um, and then that's just the treatment for their stomach area. So that's, that's my favorite cocktail for stretch marks. Do they feel much activity um, because of the anti-cellulite cream? Yes, yes. If you've, never used our, if you've never used our anti-cellulite cream, it is unlike any other you've ever tried. Trust me, in all of our classes, we make everyone put a little bit on because it's crazy active. It's amazing. Um, but it usually goes um, down after an hour or two, just depending on the client. But they, the whole point is to increase that blood supply to that area so that we can help work on rebuilding that tissue um, and strengthening that skin back up too. Okay, I'm sorry for the TCA cocktail a day before or the day of. So when you're putting some of that TCA in with the treatment cream, they're asking if you should do it the day of or the day before. Well, for the first time, I would definitely do it a few days before just to see how your skin reacts. And then um, Christine will actually do it um, just before she's putting on her makeup. If you guys have not seen Christine's skin, amazing. <laughs> Literal goals. Literal yes. Goals. <laughs> Seriously, no one could probably guess her age because she looks so amazing. And but. don't ask us. <laughs> okay, so um, Christine's favorite cocktail, how long is that left on for? So that is not removed, that is just left on throughout the entire day and you put your sunscreen and makeup on top of it. So, okay, I have this stubborn, the stubborn line between my eyebrows. Is there any cocktail that can be used for that? Yes. I love the one that we just sent out and that's the wrinkle remedy because that really helps to fill in those fine lines and wrinkles paired with the CBD eye cream. You get instant gratifications and then using it long term also helps to strengthen that area. So I love that cocktail. So use it under your eyes and then put it on that stubborn line as well on those 11s. Yes. All right. Can we use the lactic in any mask? Uh, yeah. Pretty much. I actually, one of my favorite ways to do the lactics is actually to add the micro scrub into the lactic. Mm, and that. the micro scrub has these amazing peptides in there. So you're all helping to boost exfoliation, but you're also working in the lactic and those peptides with that cronundum crystal. So that one is probably one of my favorites. We don't advertise the micro scrub as a mask, but I definitely educate people use it more like a mask than just a scrub because it does have those awesome peptides. So you really want to let it sit on the skin for at least five minutes before you take it off. Just like the peptide cleanser as well. That's something that you can leave on the skin for a little bit to get the benefits of those peptides, um, even though it's a cleanser. So you yeah, can it on the skin for a little bit as well. So. 100%. Okay, that's all the questions that we have in chat. Fantastic. This has been so fun to get with you, Corinne. And it was fun. This is wonderful. <laughs> I think um, some great info was being shared here today. Um, hopefully you learned a few things. Maybe it sparked a little creativity in you. 
um, that you'll go home, um, go into your treatment rooms with a fresh pair of eyes to look at what your client really needs and how you can better help them. Yeah. Yep. All right. Awesome. We'll go ahead and close this out. If you guys have any additional questions, please feel able to reach out to us on Instagram or through your account manager and business coordinator. And we will see you guys all next week. Tracy, do you want to give them a little teaser what we're doing next yes. week? Yes, next week is really, really fun. We're doing it on um, getting ready for summer. Uh, hopefully you're, you guys understand there is a time and a place for every chemical and product that you're using. So we're going to give you some good pointers on what would be appropriate for summer. So get ready. Should be fun. I'm excited. Thanks again, you guys. Um, again, take a look at what's out on our website. I think you guys will be, um, it's, there's a wealth of information there and all of it great. Um, good luck. Um, stay safe, stay healthy. Yep. Bye, everyone. Yay, goodbye. Yeah.